here we are with match number three. And that's Big Mike Shine there against Tom McGee. And they are not wrestling at all. It is just a fisty cup on this one. has just gone wild on them and both Shaw and Patterson are out of the ring. We're five minute mark here. He's, he's got them on the run. One thing that we can't be forgetting, Roy, is that there's going to be an interesting challenge match happening a little later on between Dan Crawford, who's a legend in these parts and making a hell of a comeback, and he's going to be uh, pitted against a man who claims to be the world's strongest man, Toots Jorgensen. And that should be one heck of a match. J.R. Foley goaded him into that match. And I think that Crawford is ready. I think he's ready for it. He hasn't been around for about five or six years. And he's been working very hard to come back at this time. Right now, Patterson's in a lot of trouble. The team of Moffat and Shaw, it's tough to know who's in the ring. Those guys are uh, not exactly playing Marquis of Queensbury. Shaw is just a monstrous man at 320 pounds. A lot of meat and potatoes went into that body. I'm surprised that uh, someone who has never spoken before by the name of Toots Jorgensen is billed as being from uh, Berlin. And uh, we've never heard him speak, but uh, that's where they're saying he's from. It's a nice card. He's a mysterious character. J.R. Foley calls him the Foley Army Bodyguard. Have a look at that Mike Shaw. I've seen better bodies at the auto wreckers. <laughs> oh! But he sure gets the job done, as Rick Patterson will attest. He is just like a steamroller in there. Oh! But the same kind of personality, too. I talked to them before the boat. Rick Patterson making a little comeback here. Shaw's waving in his partner. Give him a little hand, and he's going to get a yellow card First for that one. yellow card for Butch Moffat. First yellow card for Butch Moffat. Moffat doesn't like that, but there's nothing he can do about it. Remember, two yellow cards. After that, it's the red card and disqualification. There's going to be fireworks coming next week, though, when the winner of this Tag Team Illumination Tournament goes against Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart. Who, and, and those guys, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen them lose a match. They've been fighting out of New York. They haven't lost, I'm sure, for at least a year. That's why they're ranked number one. They're just waiting for that chance at the title. Oh. Moffat, oh, I thought Moffat might have him after that, that deadly drop that he just demonstrated. A variation of a uh, pile driver. Shaw getting in there. Patterson coming over for the tag. Tom McGee. He's going to have them both to contend with here. Now Patterson's in. For all intents and purposes. Referee Wayne Hart having one heck of a time keeping control of this match. Here's a pile driver. Pounds up in 
into the air without a move. And that is the world's strongest man. Tidman's gone, and Leo Burke has been cut. He has been cut with a chair used by Honky Tonk Wayne. Second yellow card. Burke is in big trouble here. Burke is in large trouble. Got two yellow cards now, and they are in big trouble. Leo Burke and Hito both have held the International Tag Team Championships with different partners. Ron Starr and Honky Tonk Wayne have been wrestling together in the southern states for some time and known as the Midnight Express. Leo, uh, Leo can make the tag here. It could change. Could be it. Mr. Hito taking charge. Once again, Honky Tonk getting involved, and the referee isn't dispatching him. They could have Hito in bad shape here in a minute, and I don't think Leo's in any shape to help out. Leo Burke struggling with the referee Rod Hader. Meanwhile, two on one on Hito. Hito's in trouble. And it's over. This is the special challenge match between Dan Crawford and the Terminator Toots Jorgensen. J.R. Foley has arranged this challenge match against his boy, the bodyguard, the Terminator, Toots Jorgensen, and the ever popular, making a comeback, Dan Crawford. Crawford is outweighed considerably. What is going on? Foley Did you just deck Danny Crawford? He he drove him on the back of the head with his helmet. And now Wayne Hart, the referee, and didn't see it. Shaw. Mike Shaw. Mike Shaw's in the ring. What? Now Mike Shaw is a lot more experienced see, Mike, than Jordan. See. There is the man what signed the contract. J.R. Foley. Michael Crawford. Not the Terminator. We tricked him. J.R. Foley, is... you hit him in the back of the head with your helmet. J.R. Foley says that the Terminator did not sign the contract at all, that Mike Shaw signed it, and Dan Crawford did not have a chance. Whoa, wait a minute. It was only a two count. It was only a two count. Dan Crawford didn't even have a chance to take his jacket off when J.R. Foley hit him on the back of the head with a helmet. Talk about a rude way to make a comeback. There's one of the power slams with Mike Shaw, and Crawford comes out of it again. This is amazing. A two count. It's amazing that Crawford has still got his wits about him. He got hammered on the back of the head by J.R. Foley with his helmet. Flings him out of the ring, and he landed right on the cement, Roy. I don't know why Foley is in there. What kind of a match was that? That wasn't a challenge match. That was an ambush. It was an ambush by J.R. Foley. Wait a minute. Danny's made it back in the 
ring before the 10 count. Foley is now getting the 10 count for Mike Shaw. Here comes Shaw. The referee has counted Mike Shaw out. The match is over and Dan Crawford, Dan Crawford is the winner. A lot of skullduggery happening there. Dan, I have never seen anything like that in my entire life. Well, I want to tell you, that was, I'm going to, I'm going to pay the devil his dues. That was a pretty wise piece of strategy, sort of a tactical maneuver on his part. I know exactly what he did. Last week I signed a contract, an open contract, and assumed that he would put his Terminator's name on it. I know what he did. He put the other guy's name. And that's fair. That's in war. And I don't mind it, but I got a message. No threats, no promises. Just a message. Foley, when you go home at night and you go to bed and you slither under your rock, I suggest you leave a little bit of light so you can sleep with one eye open. Because if I find your rock, I'm going to come and sit on it and squash you like a bug. I want to borrow a couple of lines from the Clint Eastwood movies. I want, first off, Foley, I want you to make my day for me. I want you to sign a contract here. Tonight, we did it your way. You didn't win. But that isn't the kind of match I want to win, and that's not the way I want to win. And as far as that overgrown juvenile delinquent that he called into the ring is concerned, I'd like to borrow another line from a Clint Eastwood movie. If you feel lucky, punk, put your name on the contract. Come on back next Friday night, and we'll do it my way, and then I'm going to show you what war is all about. If you've seen the movie Commando, or if you've seen Rambo, then you've seen the tactics in those movies. I want to tell Foley, he better keep both eyes open. He's going to see every kind of war tactic that anyone can use, I'm going to use in this ring. And that's all i got to say. Each week that I've come here, he's interfered in my match. And I want to say that I'm not going to make threats or promises. I'm not going to yell and scream because that's ludicrous. There's no way you get up here and scream and holler and make idle threats or promises you can't keep. But I'm sending out information, and I want them to hear it loud and clear. If they've got any guts at all, then come on here next week. And as I say, we'll do it right off the bell, and we'll do it my way. And i got a hunch it's going to be a total different match. Well, Danny, to come make a comeback, you at least won the match, but as you say, not the way you want to win. No, that isn't really what this business is all about. I don't want to have my hand raised in that way. I want to beat his people one at a time, and I know he's got an army of them. And if I beat him decisively, one, two, three in the ring, that eliminates one down and another one to go. And that's what my chore is. Dan, welcome Thank back. You very much. Mr. J.R. Foley, I have never seen anything like that in my life. What do you mean you've never seen nothing like that in your life? Get to the point, Mr. Mullet. Hey, we've seen it plenty of times. The same old story. There's another guy laying there crying. What do you mean you never seen it before? Every week somebody's crying. This week it's him. This because here he is, the General John Foley, outsmarts a stupid Canadian. He's laying there. Read the thing. If you, you can read it. I know. Hey, I right, know. That's all you got to know. He said that... Uh, Whose name is on that contract? It's uh, Mr. Shaw there. That's well, Shaw. Then what's there to cry about? Not a thing. Hey, what Dan wants, wants to know is, is, will you come back next week? Come and back. Come right. back next week. We're here right now. What do we want to wait for? Come no. back next week. Next week. Mike well, I'll Shaw. tell you what, Mike. Yeah. If he wants another licking, we'll come back next week. But I'll tell you something. When we walked out, we know he was beat. He was outside the ring. The fans must have thrown him back in. That's right. Somebody must have thrown him in the ring because I knew he was out cold. I'd like to wrestle him again next week and just see what he looks like standing up. All I see is him crawling around like a baby in a crib. A big crib. He's laying there like a baby. And my Terminator will terminate anyone I ask. He is my personal Terminator. And Crawford, if you want another licky next week, Mike Shaw will do it. All right, we're looking for a match next week. Mike Shaw and, of course, Dan Crawford. This is the semi-final match. One of the semi-final matches, Tom McGee and Patterson in against Rick Starr and Honky Tonk Wayne. So far, Tom McGee has really controlled this match. Yeah, they don't know what to do with a guy who's that size and that strong. He is, in fact, labeled the world's strongest man. 
Well, I'll tell you, he certainly looks like it. It looks like he's wearing one of those football collars up around his shoulders. He's a big boy. By the way, we get a lot of mail here at Stampede Wrestling, and we've got one here, the letter of the week. It says, I never miss a single episode of Stampede Wrestling. Being a widow, I can't always manage to take my only daughter to the live matches. We used to like some of the Hart Boys, but now our favorite fighter is the Honky Tonk Man. Does he have a fan club we can join? And it's signed, Vicky and Virginia Kleterski. By the way, there is a fan club, but so far, Honky Tonk is the only member. <laughs> oh, it looks like... Look, Rick Patterson's in with Ron Starr right now, and looks like he's holding his own, too, with a flying head scissors. Whoa, 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 and over we go. Rick's an all-around athlete. He was a basketball star in Minnesota before taking up wrestling, and uh, he's now double-dribbling his opponent quite nicely. Rotten Ron is uh, feeling a little bit like a basketball, I think. These boys are a little upset. Their first match, of course, we stopped in the middle of it. We just couldn't continue to show it. It was not one of the prettier matches we've seen tonight. No, it was a bloodbath, and uh, I'll tell you, that's the sort of thing that uh, I know Ed Whalen certainly gets disturbed about. One thing we should remind the fans about, and that is that next week, Five minutes, just to show Five you minutes. Stampede Wrestling is keeping up with its class, next week the Great Gamma will return. Not only the Great Gamma, but the winner of this tournament will be taking on, after they've won the international belt, will be taking on two of the finest wrestlers ever to come out of these parts, Jim the Anvil Neidhart and Brett the Hitman Hart. Oh, I tell you, that's going to be some match. As you're also aware, uh, we have uh, two more two more teams coming up and maybe you could just uh, give us those uh, the next two teams that will be fighting in the semifinals Rick Patterson is in trouble honky tonk is just throwing them around honky tonk's going up on the ropes oh and Rick Patterson is in trouble honky tonk rotten Ron teaming up Oh, he has got a wicked hip toss there that just is... I'm afraid we're not going to be able to show this one either. I'll yellow tell you. card warning to Ron Starr and Honky Talk. One yellow card. Oh, the suplex. One, two. Patterson has a lot of spunk to be getting out of that. But Rick Patterson is in trouble. Honky, they could end this one any time if he can't get over the tag. Honky Tonk and Rotten Ron Star, after their first bout, they they claimed the belt, told everybody they had it as good as one, and right now they're looking like they're in control of the semifinal. comes Tom McGee, Tom McGee cleaning house here. He's slamming one after the other. Tom McGee's in now. There he goes. A red card to Tom McGee. He put him over the top of the ropes. The referee is disqualified. The team of McGee and Patterson. That's that's unbelievable. As we said, next week the Great Gamble will be returning. That's to the right. Ring. First of all, Roy, let me say I'm glad to see you out here, and let me introduce the latest member, the only Commonwealth champion that Western Canada has ever known, the first member of the Memphis Mafia from way back, the Great Gamble. I see that things still haven't changed one bit around here. The same old ugly faces, the same old steak and barn. I see that you even got the same old suit. Well, I can do uh, the style a bit modern I do myself. Gamma, I notice that uh, you're looking very fit. Uh, where have you been I in the last year? I have always looked very fit. I've been traveling the world. 
My friend Honky Tonk here called me in Australia and told me the English puppy dogs were here just recently. Well, I came here for one reason, and we all know it. Where is that firecracker kid or dynamite kid, whatever his name is? He's holding the world mid heavy title. He ran from us last week, Gamma. Well, he must have heard that I was coming in this area. Well, that's all right. Because we still got that little weasel, the blonde-headed weasel, uh, who's claiming himself to be the, uh, the Commonwealth champion, whatever his name is. Little, little Brutus uh, Bruce Hart. That's right. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It won't be long. Just hang out of that belt, shine it for me, and next week I'm coming after you. If you don't put it on the line against me, I'll take away from you anyway. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You asked for it, Marushka, and this is it. Hunky Bill's new improved full-size pierogi maker makes 18 large pierogies. Cut them, seals them. We have just passed about the three-minute mark of this match, and it's the first time there's only been two men in the ring. All four of them in the going at it. These the Hart brothers have been uh, taking charge and doing it well. Of course, the uh, winner of this match will be going against uh, Honky Tonk, Wayne, and Ron Starr to find out who the international tag team champions are. Roy, you can't just call him Ron Starr. He gets upset about that. we got to call him Rotten Ron Starr. Well, I could certainly attest to that. Bruce Hart has just been brutal. He has uh, obviously been watching Brother Brett and using some of the tactics from his uh, television shows. Certainly has. And remember that Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart will be taking on the winners of this match, of not this match, of this tournament next week. That's right. I, it's, uh, it's just a tremendous lineup that Stu has made and uh, is bringing some great wrestling talent uh, to the ring here at Stampede Wrestling. Keith Hart has really looked good in this tournament tonight. Looks like Gamma Singh, or the great Gamma, hasn't lost one bit of, uh, of his physique in that year that we didn't have Sam Peters with. No, he certainly hasn't. I don't know what he's been doing, but whatever it is, I'm sure it was mean. Well, he does not like Western Canada, except for the fact that he has some of the best competition that he ever gets right here in the ring. John Foley is sitting beside me here, and uh, he uh, has been yelling encouragement to Kerry Brown. And, of course, Hubert Gallant all the way through. Five minutes, John. Five minutes. One thing about J.R. Foley, if the good die young, J.R. will live forever. One. He's working him into that figure four, the figure four leg lock, and it's on. Oh, no, he didn't get her locked up. No, handsome Hubert was in there with a little dirty tactic. Yellow card warning to Hubert Durant and Kerry Brown. Yellow card warning. We get a yellow card for interference there. We've also got Kerry Brown right on top of us. And it's not a pretty sight, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, if I was in Kerry Brown's shoes, I'd get a shine. I'd, uh... Look at this. Oh! Hubert Gallant just slammed Keith Hart's head right into uh, Kerry Brown's knee, and Keith is in trouble. The fans are trying to cheer him on. Kerry Brown working with the fist. And once again, Keith, Keith's head goes oh. plowing into a knee. Yeah. And Ron Hader, Ron Hader is busy trying to keep Bruce out of the ring and they keep pummeling Keith Hart. They just issued another yellow card to Kerry Brown for that. Ooh. That's that was close close one. That was about two and three quarters, I think. Bruce is trying to get Keith. Oh, small package rolls him over. 
And Ron says, only a two count. A second yellow card. A second yellow card to Kerry Brown and Hubert Gallant. Second yellow card. One more warning, and the team of Gallant and Kerry Brown are disqualified. Keith is going to try and make it over for the tag. <laughs> and he's, he's made it. it. Bruce took his mean pills, and here he comes with a clothesline. If there's no interference, this could be it. One, two. He got his leg up on the rope. Bruce showing why he's the British Commonwealth mid-heavyweight champ. Oh, pile driver. Oh, no. Kerry Brown comes down off the top of the ropes. I think Kerry may have, may have hurt himself there. Hader didn't see any of it, and he's counting them both out. Both Hubert Gallant and Bruce Hart right now are in big trouble. Oh! That's it. Kerry Brown interferes in the match. I think he had Hubert Gallant 100%. We have with us one of the finalists, a team of Hubert Gallant and Kerry Brown. Not one of the finalists, the only finalists. Now D-Day's finally hit Calgary. An old, bitter enemy of mine is coming back, Mr. Jim Neidhart. And he's bringing his little tag-along Brett. Well, you see the team you're going to have to face here. Next Friday, Neidhart and Bret Hart, you're going to have to face the handsome one and myself under the divine management of Captain J.R. Foley. Now listen, Honky Tonk Wayne and Ron Starr are no slouches in this wrestling business. But we were roped into this by Stu Hart because he wants to see the best annihilated. And believe me, there's only going to have to be one winner. There's only two belts. One team has to be the winner. Isn't that right, Hubert? That's right. I knew Carrie and I could go a long way. As a matter of fact, all the way. And that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. And for you, Bret Hart and Jim Knight Hart, we'll be here next week with the bell. And come on in. We're ready. JR, all I can say to you, Mr. Mullet, is, do you want to go to a party after? Money talk. Listen, one of the best parties you'll ever see. Jimmy the Greek is laying odds on this match. Come on up. So if he lays his money down, you know it's going to be a barn burner. So stay tuned as we coming back with the straps. seeing some dissension in the ranks here. We have two of J.R. Foley's army, two teams, fighting one another. They didn't want to fight one another, so Stu Hart put up $1,000 for the winner of this team to face Neidhart and Bret Hart next week right here. So it's been just brutal. Yeah, they actually, neither, neither side wanted to. They had to mediate with J.R. Foley, but the moment that $1,000 was mentioned, they all went for it. That's right. Honky Tonk Wayne says he would do anything for money. I don't want to find out the things that he might not do for money. No, I wouldn't want to find that out either. And Star and uh, Honky Tonk at this point have been controlling the match. Terry Brown was in a lot of trouble. Now Hubert's in a lot of trouble. Uh, earlier, Kerry Brown just about became the first man ever to be kicked into orbit. But Hubert Gallant is taking a lot of abuse right now from Honky Tonk Wayne. They are after that money with great avengeance. Kerry Brown would absolutely love to get into the ring with Jim Hyde Neidhart next week. So I don't even think the money is bothering him. He just wants to face Jim Neidhart and Bret Hart next week. The one man that's terribly confused about the whole thing is J.R. Foley. He's going from side to side, cheering for both squads. This could uh, cause a little trouble. Mind you, if baloney were snow, J.R. would be a blizzard. <laughs> We'd like to remind you once again about some of the upcoming things. Oh, no! 
Button Ron came right off the top rope. Handsome Hubert Gallant got out of the way. Now he makes... Oh! Oh, no! Kerry just flattened his own partner, and the winners of the match are one Mr. Honky Tonk Wayne and Rotten Ron Starr. I can't, I can't figure that out, Roy. Ron I don't Star understand. And Honky Tonk Wayne. Oh, you want to do that? You want to do it? You want to do it? You want to do it? The time is nine minutes. Well, that had to be one of the most bizarre endings. Say Roy, you know this is what it's all about. Here's the diamond rings, we got the limousines, we got the gold right here. A fresh roll of hundred dollar bills and Stu Hart said, and you was right here when he said it, Bret Hart and Jim Nyhart will be here next week to challenge us for these belts. And he's gonna add a thousand dollars to the winner. That's only gonna fatten our bankroll. We're gonna walk out of here with more money, more diamonds, and more belts, Roy. Woo! Let me tell you something, Roy. They may be a great tag team out east. They may be the big dogs in New York. But I got news for you, baby. New York wrestlers couldn't make it here, and you're looking at the reason why. Now, Nyhart, if you and that other Cabbage Patch kid think I'm going to throw the belt down and say, take it, it's yours, you got another thought coming, mister. Because I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do the same thing to you that we've done to every tag team that we've been in the ring with tonight. Now, Nyhart, I'm telling you, this is your home. This is your home, Cabbage Patch Kid. Do yourself a favor. Go back to New York with the rest of the fat guys. Do something that you can handle, but don't mess with the Memphis Mafia. Mafia. Now let me say this, Roy, and let me tell you, Stu Hart, if you're any kind of man at all, you will tell your son and your son-in-law not to come here next Friday night. And if they do, it's going to start out in the parking lot. We're going to take it over to the Saddle Dome. I'm going to beat Lanny McDonald. Ron Starr's going to drop a knee on it. And we're going to walk away with a hockey puck. That's it, baby. We're going to fight them in the balconies. We'll fight them in the ring. We'll take them out in the parking lot. It makes no difference to me. I'm in the best shape of my Get life. I moved my bed into the basement of World's Gym. And I'm living on pina colada and vitamin C. The hokey tonk's ready. And so am I. Leo, once again, you had to... Uh kind of get in here and straighten things up a little bit. That is about the most bizarre tag team match I've ever seen. Well, there's one thing, Roy, I want to make one thing clear. The reason I come in here, a lot of people are jumping the gun, and Hubert and I are friends. Well, they're not mistaken there. We are friends. I'm not denying the fact that we are. We're from the same neighborhood, and I've helped them a lot when he first broke into business. But the real reason tonight that I stepped in is because there was three against one. I would have done the same for anybody in there, regardless who just happened to be Hubert tonight, and as far as up teaming up once again, I'm not denying the fact that I'd like to get my hands on one Honky Tonk Wayne and Ron Starr. And now that they're the champions, they're going to feel the pressure because every challenge is going to be after them. They'll know what it's like to be champion. And I know Hubert would like to get his hands on his former partner, Kerry Brown. Now, I know he'd have to break his contract with John Foley. But I think they've done that themselves tonight because it's this man that turned their back on Hubert Gallant. And yes, as soon as he does, we plan on teaming up. We'll be the first one to put our names on the dotted line against Star, Hawk and Don Wayne, and Carrie Brown. You rest assured. Hubert, uh, about halfway through that match, John Foley left ringside and uh, has not shown up, hasn't seen him. I haven't seen him since, and, and I just I don't understand, and I'm sure you don't either. Well, first thing I'd like to say is, Thank my good friend here, Leo Burke, to come into my rescue. You know, three against one, you don't have much chance. But Kerry Brown, I never thought you would turn your back on me. But I guess I was wrong, you did. But the day will come, and I hope soon that I'll get you in the ring, and I'll get even with you once and for all. You'll be sorry of what you did to me tonight. I'm not going for that, Kerry. The night that I'm going to get you in the ring, you're going to remember the mistake you did tonight to turn on handsome Hubert Gallant. You'll remember it for a long time. Tonight, police department robberies cause problems for McCarran and Rado on Hollywood Beat at 8. Then, at 11.30, it's 90 minutes of jam-packed wrestling action on Saturday night's main event. Stay tuned now for Astro Boy, next on BU13.